To get the perfect ear on your sourdough bread, the first thing you need to do is stop the bulk fermentation at the right time. So you do your mixing, maybe you do some stretch and folds or kneading in a stand mixer, whatever your recipe calls for is fine. Once you actually get to the bulk fermentation stage or the first rise, you wanna let your dough grow until it's about doubled in size. You don't want it to be too much less than that or too much more than that. If your dough is doubled in size like this, this took me about six hours from mixing until it was doubled, this will give your dough the perfect amount of power that it needs to burst open in the oven along the score mark later and that'll give your dough a nice ear. That's what we need. We need a nice amount of power and that comes from bulk fermentation. The next step and probably the most important one is to shape your dough with good surface tension. I'll explain what that means as we go along, but don't underestimate how important shaping is when you're trying to get an ear on your sourdough bread. It's not all about the scoring. So to shape with good surface tension, there's two parts. There's the pre-shape and the final shape. Starting with the pre-shape, the goal here is to create a nice tight ball of dough with surface tension running across the top of the ball of dough pointing towards the center. So form the mound of dough with a bench scraper or with your hands into a ball. When I use my hands, I like to do this cupping and pulling motion. And when I use a bench scraper, I like to go around the ball and on the sides of the ball pushing in towards the center. I did a little bit of each of those techniques just to give you an idea. Ideally, all of the tension in the dough should be going across the top in towards the center. Once you've done your pre-shape, just let the dough rest for 30 minutes on your kitchen counter. Then a half hour later, it's time for the final shape. So I've got my banneton basket ready. You'll want an oval banneton basket. I've got a link to one in the description and dust it nicely with rice flour so the dough doesn't stick. And then I'm dusting the top of the dough with bread flour so it doesn't stick to the counter. Here's where shaping with tension is really important and you can do a lot of different shaping techniques, but I wasn't able to get a good ear on my loaf until I used this shaping technique. So that's what I'm suggesting for you to try today. Get your dough flipped over with the sticky side up and the smooth side down. Get it into a square shape like this. You can kind of flatten it out a little bit with your fingertips. Then you can either start on the right or left side, but take one third of the dough and fold it over the middle third like this. Kind of pat that seam down. Then take the opposite third of the dough and fold it over the middle third as well. Then press that down to crease it. Now you're ready to do what they call the tension roll. This is where you create a lot of surface tension across the top of the dough. Starting from the far end, tightly roll the dough into itself, rolling towards you until you've got a nice tight log of dough like this. This action is going to create surface tension running across the dough left to right. This is exactly what you want for getting a good ear on your sourdough bread. When you shape your dough with this kind of left to right, east to west surface tension, you're actually creating an opportunity for your dough later. So when you score your dough with one long slash, that opens up the possibility for your dough to actually burst open along that score mark, left to right, creating the perfect ear on your sourdough bread. That's why shaping with surface tension is so important. It's not just about the scoring. I like to give my dough a few more pushes with the bench scraper to get some extra tension across the top and then it's time to move it to the banneton basket. Simply flip the dough over, pop it in the banneton basket upside down, and there should be plenty of rice flour in there to keep it from sticking, and then you're good to go. All right, you've bulk fermented your dough, you've shaped it with good surface tension. What's the next step for getting the perfect ear on your sourdough bread? It's actually in the proofing. Step three is that you need to stop proofing when the dough still has some room left to grow. Let me explain how that works for getting an ear. To actually burst open and create an ear on the loaf, your dough needs to grow when it's baking in the oven. It's called oven spring. But your dough only has so much that it's able to grow. So if you let the dough rise too much in the proofing stage, there won't be enough gas left in the dough for it to burst open in the oven and create an ear. That's why it's important to cut off the proofing when the dough still has a little room left to grow. You can accomplish this one of two ways. You can cover up your dough and let it proof at room temperature, but for this you need to know when your dough is done proofing and you have to get good at judging when's the best time to cut it off and start baking. That's why I much prefer the second option, which is letting your dough proof in the fridge overnight. When the dough proofs in a cold environment like your refrigerator, it's gonna rise really slowly and it's almost always gonna have enough room left to grow the next day. So I proof mine for about eight to 12 hours overnight and then it looks like this the next morning. The dough is a little colder, so it'll be easier to score, and it's got plenty of room left to grow in the oven when it bakes. All right, step four for getting the perfect ear on your sourdough bread is to score your dough with one long slash at a shallow angle. For that, you'll need a razor blade or a bread lom like this one. I'm using the UFO lom, which has a straight razor blade, but you could also use a curved razor blade, which are common on different types of loms. Either way will work. 
Some people say that using a curved blade will get you a better ear on your loaf. I'm actually gonna be testing that theory next week, so stay tuned where I'm gonna put both of these blades to the test. But today I'm just using the straight razor blade to show you how easy this can be. Flip your dough out of the banneton basket and onto a small sheet of parchment paper that's a little bit bigger than the dough. Dust off any excess rice flour and you're ready to score. This is pretty easy, but it does take some practice. Starting at the end of the dough that's furthest away from you, make an incision in the dough at roughly a 45 degree angle and go all the way to the near end of the dough. You wanna score a very shallow arc from one end of the dough to the other. If all goes well, the dough will burst open like this in the oven, leaving you with a nice ear on your loaf of sourdough bread. For the last step, you need to bake with steam for the first half of the baking time. I'm gonna be using a Dutch oven to create steam in my oven. When I bake bread in this Dutch oven, the lid will trap steam around the loaf, which will allow the loaf to burst open correctly before a hard crust is formed. So for the first half of the baking time, I'm going to keep the lid on, and then for the second half of the baking time, I'm going to take the lid off. If you've got a Dutch oven, you can just do the same thing I'm doing, but if you don't have one, I'll include a video right here. In that video, I'll show you how to steam your oven without using a Dutch oven. So I'm gonna take the lid off and pop my dough inside of the Dutch oven, careful not to burn my hands against the sides. And I'm gonna close the lid and bake this for 20 minutes at 500 degrees Fahrenheit with the lid on. You should follow the recipe that you're using though for bake times and temperatures. 20 minutes later, it's time to remove the lid, release the steam, and see if we got an ear on this loaf of bread. Here we go. Sure enough, the bread's just half done baking, but it's already busted open, it had good oven spring. You can see an ear on the left side and also a second ear on the right side. That's where the dough burst open in both directions along that score mark. I'm gonna let this bake for 15 more minutes with the lid off, then I'll show you the ear and the crumb shot. Here's the final loaf of bread with golden brown on top and some dark brown edges along the ear. I know that not everyone wants an ear on their sourdough bread, but I think when it comes to this style of bread, an ear just looks cool. And when I nail the ear, it just shows me that everything went according to plan every step of the way while I was making the bread. If you wanna make this exact recipe for sourdough bread, go ahead and click on this video right here. And I'm gonna test out whether a curved blade versus a straight blade makes any difference in getting an ear. I'll put that video here as well. I'll see you in the next video.